Hello everybody, it's Sean again, um, and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about how to get website data. So um, if you haven't seen the first video, I talked to you a little bit about the Anton equation and kind of setting up what we're going to uh, be working towards, which is how to model the Anton equation from experimental data. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to get website or get the data from a website. So um, for most pro uh, problems, data formats, and um, a huge amount of modeling, we have the Dortmund Data Bank, which is how a lot of programs and large companies store or extract data about what they're working with. So um, folks like Dow and DuPont, those large companies, um, they use the Dortmund Data Bank to gather experimental data and use that data to determine new reactions, which create new things like polystyrene or saran wrap. Um, so to kind of get information to take it from this website, which for this specifically we're looking at water, um, we're going to try to take data from this website on this table to anything or in a way that we can read it and try to uh, try to you know uh, model it so what we have here uh, so we can try copy pasting it but it doesn't do anything it really doesn't like what we just did so as you can see that we get this huge data format string which it's not useful it's not a it's not a way we can use it it's a way we can read it so to help us get started, we're going to do some imports from libraries from GitHub, and we are going to um, create some more definitive information, or we're going to get the definitive information in a way that we can read it and understand it. So from the, the GitHub repository LXML, which was the original format for the internet, so fun fact, so uh, HTML is currently what programmers tell or website builders tell the website how to render. Originally, that was LXML. So as kind of a callback to the original internet, um, they've named the website LXML. And we are going to ask it to import requests for that library. Um, we're going to import numerical Python as NP, just an easy way to remember it. Um, and as we are importing all of these, we, we don't need any, any plots yet or any way to deal with the numbers yet. We will get into how to take the numbers that we see here and put them into real usable math. So we have this original URL. I'm actually going to avoid pulling data directly off of the website as they, they don't want to get a bunch of hits saying that people are digging into our website. And I grab this. So to avoid um, creating a bunch of website hits on this, I have a GitHub repository for content. Um, so bear with me as I type this out. So now I just skipped the, the rest of the teaching, so I'll give it a pause so you guys can get the, the website link here. So, woo, we got it, and the no problems with the HTMLs. So now we're going to define some variables here. So we have some content. We need to define if I can spell. And we're going to tell it from the requests library, our URL, or our we're going to tell it to get something, our get URL, which is what we've defined above, and 
we are going to tell it that we want the content from. And to help us determine this format, we need to tell it what to grab. So this HTML.from string. So we are going to take this HTML website, we are going to grab from a string HTML, HTML tree. Let's see what I did wrong. Content tree equals HTML from string. Form string. I don't need it to form a string. I want it to be from a string. So as most things go, typos everywhere, unfortunately. Sometimes they don't give you the, uh, they don't give you spell check in these things. So now we're going to uh, define what we're going to grab. So we're grabbing some temperature strings, which we need to kind of get them into a way that we can see them. So we're going to use this xpath command. So the path is where we're or kind of um, where it's at in the in the HTML. So for those of you who are really familiar with it, there is something called the inspect element. F12, not F11. So F12, we can see that, that we have this inspect element. So through this expect, inspect element, we can see that we have these different types of of renderings. So we have these bodies, classes, scripts, and as we go through, point out some of the, the table functions, some of the text. Um, so you can see I haven't played around with the inspect element quite a lot. Um, go through and break out things. We can point them out. We get the logos up top. So we don't need everything that's up top, but it looks like we're going to have to go through it. And now as we move through, we can go through. And as we get through, you can see as the the we define more things and start to look through more of these um, definitions, you can see it starts to pick out some stuff for us. Um, and point out and highlight things as we go through the inspect element. So that's a little bit more about kind of this path or X path that we're looking through. We're actually trying to div or go through and pull through this table or pull through the, the HTML elements and tell it to look for something. And what we're going to tell it to look for is all of this stuff in the table. And as we go through the table, you'll notice that we can even define very certain elements of the table. So as we get through and write out this really uh, relatively long X path. Um, so these asterisks typically means grab everything. And if everything is labeled as an ID from, sorry, an ID from the website, or more accurately from this online dash DDP form. And we need it to be from the divider. We need it to be from this div two and table three. And then we're going to go through the table body to look at these positions. And if you didn't want to, uh, or if you wanted to look at a very specific position, you will simply input the positions with these brackets like we did before with the tables and table bodies. Um, give it a heart. And then we want all the text in it. And now time to finish it out as our finish of string. So this is our really, really long string is to tell it what to look for in the inspect element. And it's going to pull out exactly what we want. 
So if we wanted, let's say, position, or let's say we wanted the temperature and pressure at four, or the temperature and pressure at 473 and 1562 kilopascals, well, then we simply tell it, or we tell it the position and where we at or where we want it. So now that we have all of our data written into our strings, so uh, the unfortunate part about XPath is when we bring it into the bring it into the, the sheet, it is simply in a string. Unfortunately, um, I'll cover this in the next video when we take these strings or they may look like numbers, but they are currently strings, so they won't know what to do with it. It's like typing a word. Um, unfortunately, these strings have numbers in them, but there is a way that we can take these strings and turn them into real numbers. So we can graph them and do what we want. To. Um, that's really it for now. Uh, in the next video, I'll cover um, how to model the entire Anton equation and get more into a little bit why we're doing this. Um, right now, this is just how to get website data and pull hits. Um, really useful tool, pays a lot of money, but it's also uh, can be a little, a little tricky with copyright laws. So that's why we're going to use this, or we're going to circumvent by using this URL, and we only get one hit from the DDB website instead of having to get hundreds of thousands of hits, depending on how many people decide to use this. Um, regardless, I'll talk to you next time and we'll learn to take this data or we'll learn what to do with this data and put it into an Anton equation. All right, thank you.